most important thing I have experienced is the scale because there are 20 partners and they are from nine countries and there are six types of organizations. This means that the, like from many dimensions there are many different languages. Even the design teams that we manage in three countries, they all have different understanding of design. In the beginning it's communication, it's understanding what people mean. The language isn't the issue, everybody's language is perfect. It's knowing what their actual aspirations are in terms of the project because like I say these are areas which are not normally put together in a, in a European project. European projects tend to be either very technology driven or in another area entirely. This one was unique because it brings together technology drive and also a real requirement from a design point of view. I think it has, yeah. I think designers have proved to be very open-minded. Um, they've, um, you know, taken on board um, the different ways that engineers and chemists and scientists work and that's helped us get beyond that challenge. And I think also that we had some workshops where we tried to develop um, materials and design and I think the way they worked in that and the way their approach to that really helped us overcome that challenge. Yeah, I mean, again, I think coming from a, a, a science, chemistry um, and engineering sort of discipline, um, the, the way the project would have been structured um, would have been completely different. Um, we would have had set and possibly prescribed ideas and notions about what the products um, should have been led by um, sectoral thinking as opposed to um, end user thinking. Uh, well then you would of course lose that aspect of user centricity which we have experienced now that that's a very a extremely important component and that you have to constantly monitor that it is maintained throughout the product development process so not only the design but then actually in the more in the technological solutions so this would be um, devastating for the end result if if this is lost probably the project uh, uh, will be not possible this project without design is not possible constraining the imagination well, as I said pre previously, it's, um, it's a first time, so the challenges are to uh, maybe uh, uh, adopt the, um, the way of uh, thinking of the designer in this project and understand that they have a different vision, they see the project from a different angle, and uh, being from a different angle, I have to take this into account into the way I'm uh, dealing with the project itself. Yes, indeed. Well, this is indeed the main part for us in, in the project. And um, we were really pleased to see how older persons were considered as experienced uh, um, co-researchers across the process. Um, we love to see that they were appreciated for uh, the added value they could bring. And they themselves, they appreciated a lot on the other side to, to be at the, driver's seat, at the driving seat. So they were pleased in seeing that they were able to shape part of the research thanks to their input. I think it is the path. I think that uh, co um, creators should delegate responsibility on, on consumers and consumers should take this responsibility to, to design and to define what they really want. So it is kind of balance um, on creators and consumers. So I think that co-create is, is the way to, to face this challenge. Actually, design was for the first time associated to technology. It's the first uh, occurrence in the European projects and so I'm very happy to be part of this uh, first experience. Lots. So I've, I've learned lots from designers in that their imagination is boundless, um, but I think that also needs to be tempered by some of the technological um, constraints of what is possible and what is not possible. In this case, in, the, in this project, having a closer uh, relation with a, with a design management competence 
uh, it was really interesting for me and for, and for my team to uh, widen our uh, capabilities and to, and to have access to uh, different or let's say lateral um, um, typology of work. More than, more than uh, fulfilled my expectations um, because it was hugely challenging at the beginning uh, with a lot of unknowns, um, a lot of complexity um, in this project and to have that um, get to a point where we have a common understanding um, and some exciting prospects that are going to come out of it with real um, commercial potential, um, yeah, it, it, it's great. Um, I think it's been critical in this project, um, the, the nature of the funding is we're looking at how we bring the artistic and the creative in alongside the material development um, and the design management process has been really important to help that translation and the interaction between those two things. Um, as I said we've got you know, a lot of countries, we've got a lot of different partners, they come from a number of different backgrounds, different sectors. Um, and so I think it's the design management approach that's helping to integrate and um, encourage people to work together and give a process and a set of tools that help create the shared vision for the project, which when you're coming from such diverse disciplines can be quite hard to do, I think. We defined a, a dynamic and evolving design management for this project. Um, this is mainly because every six months even sometimes every three months, there are some new needs coming from the consortium. So we, every three months, every six months, we, we maybe uh, uh, have to come up with something new and uh, make sure that the uh, human element, the older people in this, in Matro Life's context, is in the center and we prioritize their stories over technology, over any type of business constraint that we have. Uh, indeed, we just recently applied for a design management award. It's going, we are going to hear the results in August. Uh, 